Okay, it's Mateo San Diego from the Sons of Montezuma podcast. I'm joined with Wayne Cotto from the Hawaii Sports Fans Channel, the Rainbow Wrap Up, <laughs> Aztecs and the Warriors this Saturday. What's going on, Wayne? Uh, we got such a long history, and I'm excited to keep it going this week. I'm I'm a little nervous, but I'm excited, and it's always good to be with you, Mateo. Hawaii, San Diego State. 23 wins for us historically, 11 wins for you guys historically. You guys have been a thorn in our side the last few years on and off. This game is being described as unwatchable <laughs> filth. <laughs> I know you saw it. I saw it. Everybody did, in, yeah. in the conference has seen it. Both of our I fan did. bases have read it. <laughs> I mean, unwatchable filth, man. I, I, uh, Alabama writer writing about... A Mountain West rivalry. Like, come on, man. Come on. I have to give it to him. You know, he, I, I was impressed with some of his knowledge of what was going on. But, you right. know, it's sometimes, like I said, we said, Mattel, we got we to gotta tell it like it is. And maybe he is because for us, at least, I saw some unwatchable film and I was there for it in person live <laughs> about five times this year. So I'm OK with, um, you know, with the name, the, the slinging and everything, because I know where we are. But at the same time. Hey, maybe we're still in the, the, the national eye. I don't know. I don't know. Well, well, I think the article detailed Hawaii as the class clown. So, you know, class <laughs> clowns always get that attention, man. They I, make the see, class fun sometimes, right? I don't th- I don't know. See, that was a one analogy I told Shane <laughs> on our show. I don't know if that one fits up because, like, are we that funny? We're just kind of sad now. We're more like the emo kid now. So I feel like it's it's really not class clown, but he was spot on with a lot of who we are and what we used to be in that glory Mm -hmm. era. Mm -hmm. But also we're kind of both programs that are kind of like that too, where we are historically a certain way. And it's like, you know what you're going to kind of get, but um, you know, for us going up to, to San Diego and I'm glad that we get to go back. I mean, it's really been a while since we've been out there because the last game obviously was during COVID and it was Carson. Yeah. So it wasn't that. So, yeah, I'm excited to see where, you know, this ends up going this year. Don't feel too bad, man. We were labeled as the modestly successful, depressing guy. (laughs) See, we're depressing. I don't know. You guys aren't depressing. (laughs) No, we're Aztecs fans. We're always depressed, man. San Diego sports fans in general, we're always depressed. I mean, the Padres are in the playoffs. That's right. And the large majority of us are are probably still depressed right now. (laughs) Ah, that's amazing that they got in, honestly. I mean, give it sometimes this year. Without Tatis, man. Hey, Without Tatis. You got, got to hand it to him. Got to hand it to him. So, yeah, like Hawaii has always been known for the for the wide open offenses, the run and shoot type of style right now. You know, explain to us having Timmy Chang back. I mean, this is a legend for Hawaii. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a slow rebuild. You yeah. know, uh, I think everybody in the conference has – maybe one former Hawaii player because it was just a, a, a total spread out. I know we got, yeah. you know, we, we got a couple players from mm-hmm. the state, but mm-hmm. then also, mm-hmm. you know, Justice Tavai, the Tavai brothers, Justice just came over from you guys. But tell us, man, I know it's been a tough year, but, you know, what are the bright spots coming into this game that you're looking forward to? Well, you know, after the Michigan game, is which was a blowout at Michigan. And it was easy to feel sad about that game because it was a blowout. But we saw some bright spots. We scored a touchdown there. Then we come home and play Duquesne, who nearly beats us, you know, FC, a lower FCS team. So there's all these question marks. So going into New Mexico State, I think we were just kind of, most of the fan base had kind of given up or reserved on the season, which, you know, before the year, like I said, it's it's a rebuild as well. It's going to be a slow rebuild. It just is that way. So yeah. I, I figured we could possibly go win this this year. I mean, to be honest. So just to see steady improvements in Mexico State, which we lost to, and that was hard to swallow because it's New Mexico State, who's historically the worst team in FBS. But that's kind of where we are now. And, you know, the thing is, this new offensive coordinator that was brought in that nobody knew who he was. And Timmy Chang even admitted he didn't even know him, Shoemaker, before he called him. He didn't know him, and he hired him to be our OC, which I think raised some red flags, and we talked about that. But, um, you know, he, he, this past week, put in some run-and-shoot principles. So what that guy was saying in the article is like, Hawaii used to be that fun and gun, watch this team. You know, finally, maybe we're stepping back in that direction, and maybe that wasn't his intention coming into this year because, honestly, the offense was just stagnant. The quarterback just didn't have not looked very good um, really this year at all. And that's hard because usually we have great quarterbacks too. Even if they're local quarterbacks from Hawaii, we always have guys that, you know, can, can really throw the ball around and sling it around. But 
this year has just been a carousel of quarterbacks. Um, and at the same time, it's been, it's, it's been hard to gel and the, the team has lost its number one receiver already. Um, but they're going to get some guys back. And like I said, this run and shoot coming back in. So you're going to see some of that back on the field, back Hawaii four wide, you know, guys in the slots. Um, you're going to see that the stuff that, you know, you would traditionally see, you're going to see a little bit more of, but we weren't like that at the beginning of the year. We literally just went to that last game, last game because of fans get murmuring and talking like, Hey, Hey, what's going yeah. on? You know? Um, so that's something <laughs> to be excited about, I think, but I think being a Snapdragon, I'm excited to be there for the first time myself. Yeah. I mean, I've been to every stadium in the Mountain West until Snapdragon came along. So now I have to, I have to do it all over again, but I, I'm kind of going to miss Puck. I mean, and, you know, just like how people want to, to parallel the stadium situation in San Diego to Honolulu and, and what we're, what we're doing really that, um, that same nostalgia of the stadium past still lingers over us. And I don't know what it's like for you, but I know for us, I mean, you know, our, our stadium is still standing. Um, and you know, now that the school has, it's going to be given that site to build a new stadium, we could probably possibly bring back some of that, uh, you know, old stadium, because I think that's, that nostalgia is important, but yeah, I feel yeah. that nostalgia of watching my old San Diego videos and like, Oh, Qualcomm. Yeah. I mean, what is that like for you guys too? Man, I, I listened to you guys last episode, like I said, and I could definitely feel that it's a very similar parallel between o the old Aloha stadium and, and the old Qualcomm Jack Murphy, both of them had somewhat of an NFL presence, right? It was big yeah. enough. They were both big enough for NFL yeah. audiences. Obviously, we had the Chargers, but you guys had the Pro Bowl every year. So there was always that that shadow of the NFL kind of hanging over. And then with all those years with you guys playing there for us, it's been a big change, man. We you know, we got the site and now it's been redeveloped. The stadium is all brand new Snapdragon Stadium. But just being there, there's nothing surrounding it really is just, you know, asphalt and some, you know, dirt lots. But you can already tell it's a completely different property completely different feel tailgating we have it for these first couple of years but tailgating is as as you know it as like the family bringing the car and pulling yeah. out the barbecue yeah. like that's going to be gone in the next you know five years mm -hmm. i would think once they start developing the rest yeah. of the site start building you know retail shops and bars yeah. and restaurants and then yeah. a whole campus expansion is going to be there so I'm not familiar with exactly what your your guys' plans are, but I can imagine it's going to be similar, right? Because real estate, you got to make money off of that. Of course, that of course. The state owns the land that actually the stadium and the parking lot is. So that's even more for them, a huge asset that they need to consider for other initiatives around the entire state, not just around sports. But Hawaii, the brand has been tarnished so much over the years just because, you know, a lot of it is because the school hasn't, tried to create new fans really that's the, at, at the end of the day hawaii used to just have so many fans built in really in the 70s and they capitalized on it going division one getting a new stadium but over the years we just lost fans and this is before this current administration this is before this current coaching staff so it's not like it's their problem alone but the school in general hasn't had really a vision of where they wanted to go so that's why we're here stuck with we can't go into the stadium it's condemned literally yeah, and now yeah. we can't really play on campus too. It's just you'll have to come and see it. Um, you it's know, the same of... thing. It's the same issue we had. There was no space on our campus to build anything. We're up on a mesa looking down, and there was no space. We were landlocked. On the the candidates for governor were even questioned last night on a debate on the news about what they would do about the stadium specifically. Um, and one of I them mean that's so much money that they could make. Yeah. So one of them, the lieutenant governor talked about, though, not really necessarily making money, but building housing. And that was something that was talked wow. about. That was something talked about. Um, so th this whole situation is crazy because we just had a major change. We literally had a state senator in Hawaii over last, about five years ago, Glenn Makai, who, who, my, who I've had on my show as well, talk about how he created this this committee to explore options of a private uh, public partnership with several developers that they mm -hmm. could put in retail space, blah, blah, blah. So they've gone, I'm talking, this has been years yeah. where they've had a whole separate ad hoc office dedicated to the new Aloha Stadium uh, Entertainment District. The governor just last week threw it out the window. It was like, you know what? Now I just give let UH because we had this surplus after the pandemic, apparently. So now they're saying, well, let's just, now that we have cash, we don't have to use bonds. We don't need this private public partnership but and the governor really 
it's political as well because the senator and the governor really don't they're not really eye to eye so um it's a major change so now the school now the governor out of nowhere is saying the school is going to be able and this is not this is out of nowhere but see the funny thing is the school is already comfortable trying to upgrade our on campus which like you said isn't big enough but the school is only going to go to seventeen thousand, and then they're getting that's comfortable really they're getting yeah, comfortable on campus. Comfortable. You don't have to do much logistical yeah. stuff. It's just, hey, let's invite everybody in. They leave. And but right now, we only have 9,000 people on campus. We went yeah. from a 50,000 stadium to 9,000, 9, and we're barely getting 9,000. So even when we yeah. start expecting, we don't know where we're going to go. So it's very, it's the, the, the it's similar situations, but not at all. Because, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Snapdragon, for one thing, is done. Um, and well, we had, we, we had to fight. We we had to fight for it. We had to actually vote. Oh, just sure. to get yeah. that property because yeah. it wasn't state owned; yeah. it was city owned. And you know there was the threat of the Chargers, and yeah. you know all yeah. the different other political factions that that were trying to get their hands on. You know, a yeah. soccer team was trying to get it in front of San Diego State. So the, I hear what you're saying. They're very different, very similar. I hope things work out for you guys, man. You guys need to, <laughs> so. you know, it's a great opportunity that the university could really, you know, through public private partnerships, but can still make a lot of money and grow the program. One of the things I thought about this article that also made me, uh, you know, I, I thought he had it, hit it on the head as far as describing our styles of football and the programs and where they're at right now. But at the same time, it kind of got me upset because <laughs> when you look at the whole national landscape of college football, there's the haves and the haves nots. Yeah. And we're like straddling that line, yeah. trying to get over, you know, mm -hmm. Hawaii and, and San Diego mm -hmm. State in, in that G5 market. Yeah. While they ridicule us, make fun of us, talk about how we're not at where we used to be historically. But yet the whole college football machine is aimed at kind of minimizing our relevancy when it comes yeah. to television when it comes to marketing when it comes to all those things you know it's a little bit of a double-edged sword man these guys you know looking down on us and i mean your guys situation trying to get that stadium like for crying out loud doesn't help well i think you know the, the problem is that with the have and have nots which we are strutted in that line but it's the, the gap is going to grow wider and it's really on tv markets for one thing and also you know the big 10 and sec like i still don't see if the 12th game I don't know if a 12 game playoff is still going to come. I, I I really don't know because at the same time, like there's no need for the big 10 and SEC to, to, to deal with anyone else anymore, really, even the PAC 12. So while we were historically trying to get into the PAC 12 and scrape in there, the PAC 12 is really losing its power five ground as well. So yeah, yeah. I, you know, at the same time, we have to operate as a minor league of football, of, of pro football. Anyways, as like you said, we're building products, trying to make a money. We're, building brands but at the same time players do need to be compensated and we do need to change the you know the paradigm behind how the game runs just because it's not sustainable because players you know and kids are getting smarter they understand their rights more they understand a long term their the health crisis that a lot of former football players find themselves in yeah, so i think yeah. now we're we're at a place where how do we sustain our programs to make them relevant to the people our fan bases and you know, that does even for Hawaii, I'm not saying that we, we want to be FCS, but we're going to be losing grip so much at FBS. Like, what is FBS even going to be? And I know I saw the presidents talk about, well, the non Big Ten and SEC presidents talk about how they want the NCAA to still be behind football. But at the same time, that's only because they want them to run the Olympic sports, the other sports. They don't really care about their football presidents because they don't want any authority telling them what to do. Because now the money's going to start pouring in even more on all sides, which is fine. Because that's how America works. But at the right. same time, um, you know, we can still find a grip. To me, it's always been about winning our conference and being good about that, whatever conference we're in. You know, it's like we've never tried to compete uh, historically nationally. But I can see the frustration because a, a team like yours who finds itself in the top, you know, 20, 25 uh, pretty often, it's like you, you'll always try and claw for whatever kind of bit of respect you can get and it's like that's enough sometimes and sometimes it's tired of being enough you're, you're tired of having to justify you know for uh we're, we're setting the lower the bar so much lower every game that it's like we're tired of having to take moral victories like it does yeah. infuriate you a little bit because it's like you know i we deserve better and 
you know, as a fan base, as, as, as a fan myself, traveling to every single game, I haven't missed a game now. It's going to be my 79th game in a row, this game against awesome. San Diego State. And it's like, I my, my piggy bank has already been busted into pieces. So <laughs> I don't know how much time I'm going to make it, but our team also needs to function in a way that is beneficial to the whole community so that people buy in and that people will start paying attention and that we can build the stadium. Because I think because this team is losing so much re- relevance, it, it does hurt, you know, the stadium being built, being run efficiently because there's less buy-in. And before there was so much community buy-in, the whole island bought in. And like I was talking about on the show last, um, last show with my guys, like we still see the love. I still see the love amongst all my own family who doesn't support UH, who doesn't go to games. They would be freaking dead. They would be, they would be, you know, they would be disappointed if UH yeah. went away or the program got cut, but that's not enough to just be sad. It, it's, you have to show up. You have to buy tickets. You have to be present, you know? Anyways, man, let's let's chop it up down to this game. Any score predictions? Any, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, if, if Hawaii is going to win this game, how are they going to win this game? Oh, it's going to be the defense is going to have to show up and just limit the points because the really it's been, you know, the offense has been kind of up and down, but so is the defense. But I think as the, if the offense can score a couple touchdowns and, you know, maybe score even two touchdowns and keep it a low scoring game i mean you know last time we beat you guys at home in the divisional title game of course that was rollo but that was 14 11 game you know 14 11 would be a great score to win but if we only score 14 points well uh, we if we yeah I, I think we have to really hold san diego to a very low score to win this game but i think i don't know what i had it in my i don't know 45 to 20 i think i had as my score so i don't know i don't know i gotta check what my but I could see something like if we do score I, in my head now, I could see us scoring like 17, but I could see it being like um, maybe like 35, 17 Hawaii. I mean, San Diego, <laughs> like I, I, I think that we can keep it. Sorry if you wanted me to come on and challenge you like we might actually win, but that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're, we're filthy and we know it. We're rolling around in the filth. You know, our <laughs> offense has had our struggles, a lot of turnover, yeah. a lot of staff additions this past week. So they're trying to implement, you know, either yeah. condense the playbook or, or implement some different things that we do well. So, man, it, it might be a low-scoring affair. It might yeah. be like one of those 14-11, you know, 17-14 type of games. Our defense yeah. has been on point all year. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, it's tough when you're constantly out there on the field and not really getting much rest in the game. So th- this this game is, is truly going to be a filthy... <laughs> well, we're going to be there to watch it. So, so <laughs> it won't be completely unwatchable because we're diehards. Of San course. Diego State, Hawaii, Sons of Montezuma, the rainbow wrap up everybody definitely go check out bold podcast to get all your information about hawaii football program san diego state football program and don't listen to everything that some alabama writer has to say (laughs) because you know hey it won't be that unwatchable right we'll be there watching it we will (laughs) i look forward to seeing you on saturday man you gotta stop by the tailgate or something no yeah yeah you have to let me know where you folks are where are you gonna be tailgating i'll definitely come by Sons of Montezuma tailgate is always in the south yellow parking lot. All of our okay. listeners, they, they know where we're at. They know where to find us. They know where to find the logo flags and everything. I love it. I love it. So I love it. We'll be out there, man. Hopefully it'll be a beautiful day. Always a beautiful day when San Diego and Hawaii, man. That's right, bro. I, I hope I'm excited. I'll definitely see you there Saturday. I'll come by the tailgate for sure. All right, bro. Cheers, Wayne. Cheers, I'll see man. you later. Aloha.